Four and I am here to wish Guy a very happy birthday. So am I allowed to sack people? <laughs> oh, oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> I love celebrating my birthday, but <laughs> thank you, Murray. Goodness me. I saw that first photo. It's like, I think that's the oldest photo of me on Facebook. <laughs> so one of the first. Never mind. Thank you. Thank you. I do enjoy celebrating my birthday, and um, I don't mind getting old. I'm older. I'm not old. Older. Um, yeah, so thanks. Celebrated with a party yesterday, so that was pretty cool. And you get to share my balloons today and some of my leftover food. <laughs> yeah, and it's all of my favourite food, so, you know, you'll know what I like. <laughs> so please eat it up because I don't want to take it home. <laughs> so, awesome. Um... Even better than it being my birthday today, it's great to be in the house of the Lord today. That is why we are here. That's where our focus needs to be. And, um, and we want to give him all the praise and glory today. We are continuing in our um, theme of our favourite psalms. And um, I, en- I thought you might be sick of hearing from me, you know, a little bit. So I've enlisted some help today. And um, Captain Lynn Boughton is going to bring the message today, um, and it is based on Psalm 46, one of her favourite psalms. One of the things that I have loved about moving to Adelaide is that when we got here, we knew no one. No one. Everyone was new. So all the friends that we have now in Adelaide are brand new friends, and that's exciting. But Lynn has an extra special connection with us because she's also a session mate. Now, we did train in college in two different states. We were in Sydney. Lynn was in Melbourne. But there's still that connection. And uh, that's, it was really special to now have a friend from the same session, but we trained separately. And um, I, I love celebrating those um, connections. And Lynn has a very, very, very significant role in the Salvation Army. She is the Divisional Chaplaincy Manager, so she looks after all of our chaplains. And she is also a chaplain at Bramwell House, which is a family violence uh, centre. And more than that, she is our very own personal chaplain at Patchwork Plus. How cool is that? So she takes the job very seriously and she's very good at it. So if you want to know more about that, go and ask her. She's also a member of our core. Did you know that? Good, good. So it's great to have one of our own sharing with us today. Um, I'm not going to rattle off many things about the newsletter and all of that sort of thing. You can check that out afterwards. So uh, Only just to say, please pray for all of our families who are on um, school holidays travelling or otherwise, keep them in your prayers and thoughts. There are people of our congregation who are unwell. Um, I haven't got permission to share, so I'm not going to publicly from here, but um, please just pray for the people of our uh, congregation who perhaps are not well at the moment. And of course, please always pray for Belinda and David and Josh who are having a great time in the Northern Territory in Darwin, having their holidays. There is so much to be thankful for, so much to be grateful for. And from what I've read from Psalms 46, this is what I find, a a, a psalm of praise, thanking God for who he is. And uh, I want to read it to you from that paraphrase, um, Psalms Now because it just helps give a little bit of clarity in the perspective um, with a bit of modern language. So here it is. Our great God is still our refuge and strength. 
He knows our problems and fears. Thus, we have no business doubting him. Even though the earth is convulsed in tragedy or its human masses threatened by ethnic hatred, disease, drugs, crime or abuse. God continues to reign as all-wise and as almighty as ever. His eternal plan is not cancelled out by the whims of human leaders or the freakish accidents of nature. Nations will destroy each other. Civilizations will perish. The earth itself may one day become a smoking cinder, but God will not leave us. He is forever our sure refuge and strength. Just look around you. Read the pages of history. Refresh your flagging spirit with the reminder of his great feats throughout the ages. And you will again hear him speaking. Relax. Stop fretting. And remember that I am still your God. I still hold the reins of this world. God is here among us. He continues to be our refuge and strength. And then the song came to mind, this is why I love my Jesus. This is why I love him so. He has pardoned my transgressions. He has washed me white as snow. He is my refuge and strength. He is my saviour. He is my everything. This is why I love my Jesus. We're going to sing that song just now. Let's stand together. We'll start with uh, verses 1 and 2. Please, band. Let's read together verse 3. Would you know why I love Jesus, why he is so dear to me? Tis because amid temptation he supports and strengthens me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's sing verses 4 and 5, please. Would you know why I love Jesus, why he is so dear to me? Tis because again. 
chorus again. Are there a few people who would just like to raise their voices with a short sentence prayer as to why you love Jesus today? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Father God, even though we see a world that uh, looks like it's falling apart around us, your word promises us, as we have already read this morning, that you are still in control. May our faith live up to those promises. May we look to you as our refuge and our strength. May we look to you as our victory in every conflict, because you are our saviour and you are our friend. We pray for those in our world, our personal world, our church world, that perhaps do not know this truth for themselves yet. Give us opportunities to speak your name and your love to them, to have the answers that perhaps they are looking for. And if they ever ask us the question, why do you love Jesus? Then we will have an answer. So God, be with us today, be in our thinking, be in our actions, be in, be in our hearts and our attitudes, be with those who are not well, with those who are travelling, may your comfort surround all of us, wherever we are, reminding us always that you are there for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Thank you, please be seated. I get an opportunity to actually have a chat to someone that I don't often get a chance to have a chat to. So just welcome Dan. I'm not sure if you know him. <laughs> um, he may look a little bit different to the way he has previously and people might be going, what the? Um, but that's all good. But I just thought it's been an awesome opportunity to get to know you a little bit just with talking about... Um, just stuff in general as far as what you think of the place. So I thought, well, and a little bit more about who you are yourself. And so I'd just like to share that with everyone else as well and to so say, okay, a couple of questions. So you're sort of raised up around Dingle Farm, and I know you've been here way longer than I have, um, and just like to find out how long have you been here for and how you started here. Uh, well, like you all know me, I've been here kind of all my life, so what, that's 20 years now, so, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Real hard one. Um, so, yeah, no, um, being born into it, it actually can be hard sometimes when you're trying to find your own way, and so I guess... When you find your own way, you actually 
working out what means something to you in the future. So what is it you do for a living or what is it you do day to day? Um, so at the moment I'm studying at Adelaide University. I'm studying a Bachelor of Music Classical Performance on the trombone. And at the moment I'm just, uh, as most of you know now due to my hair, I've <laughs> recently I've been successful in enlisting with the Australian... Oh, well, the Army Reserves as a musician, as a part of the 1027 Battalion. Um, yeah. So talk about when worlds collide again. So um, military service and uni, um, that can be a pretty tough gig really, like for your faith, for everything else like that. So how do you think you'll go? with your faith in those sort of spaces and do you have a way to connect yourself in that sort of environment? Um, well, let's see. I think my faith may be a little bit challenged, but I don't think too much because I've just got to remember university, it's very diverse. Just, you know, accept everyone. If, you know, if they don't believe in what we believe in, they may believe in something else. Completely fine. Don't judge them by who they are, blah, blah, blah. Uh, army. <laughs> army. Um, no, it should be fine there as well. Again, same as uni. Everyone comes from a different background and they can believe in what they want to believe in and I'll just believe in what I want to believe in. Yeah. So with the space with the military and everything else like that, does that mean you have to do boot camp or do you have to do regular training or is it all about music? Um, so being a part of the army, it's so uh, I'm a part of the army band. So if we think of an army, then band. So I'm technically a reservist first, so I've got to do all the kind of military training. So hopefully at the start of next year, I'll go over to Kapuka and do my five to six weeks, how many weeks that is. But then after that, I'm banned. So I'm a musician who kind of helps kind of promote the army to the wider community in uh, a variety of ways in kind of different... You wouldn't see maybe the proper army band doing a barbecue somewhere, but you might see the army reserves doing a barbecue, maybe some carols down the road or something like that. But, yeah... Yeah, in our role, we've actually had a little bit of work with the 1027 as well. So it's a sort of thing where um, the opportunities to actually even just be part of it is huge. We, I actually remember one where it was up at Coltano where we went there, um, where the military band was doing a gig probably about 300 kilometres past Port Augusta. So they had to stay overnight in Port Augusta and they ended up doing a band rehearsal which was actually our party for break up of the thing so um, military life is going to be very interesting um, I think you'll do really well and I just wonder when you start looking at what the future holds for you um, and if I was going to ask you who you are, what your story is do you have a way to describe yourself or do you have a way to um, let people know who you are and what you believe in? Like, I know they're very general. Um, well, if I was to describe myself to someone, I'd probably just say, my name's Daniel. Hello. I play the trombone. Um, let's see. I can help out your band if you need some help. Um, let's see. I was brought up in faith and, yeah... Hope we can get along. Yeah, basically like that. Yeah. Thank you. That should do. Thank you. Well, that was insightful, wasn't it? <laughs> Did you learn oh, I think I've learned some few things about my own child. No, it's all good. It's so good. We have so many great opportunities in this world and it's amazing where you see a child start and where they 
grow and develop. So it's very fortunate and this place has a big part to play in that. And I, I'm really excited because I get to um, see people grow from little to bigger in my job here at First Steps Playtime. But I'm going to do the kids chat today. It's going to be a little bit different. So if the kids want to, we do have a couple of children if they want to come down, if not, I'm happy just to be up here by myself. But I've got Caden, and that's a, always a good start. Last week we had Messy Church, which was amazing. It was so good to see so many people from the community come to this place. And we're going to do a song today because I learn a lot through music. I've always learned a lot through music. And there's so many messages that are done through music and today Caden if you want to stand up with me we're going to stand up we're going to do a song together we did this this one last week and it's really relevant because the bible um, verse today psalm 46 is a great psalm and there's some words that we're going to do in the song that are going to be in the bible verse Hopefully, I think they are, yes. So we're going to do My God is so big, because he's so big. How big is he? Can you show me how big God is? I know. Can you stretch your hand, arms as high as you can go? Like real. Whoa. That's massive big, isn't it? So God made the mountains. Can you do a mountain for me? And rivers really wide. How wide can you get? That's it, really wide. Wow, you can almost do the splits. And do you know what? He put the stars into place. How amazing is that? At night when you look up and you see all these stars, God put them all into place. So we're going to do a song that's called, my God, it's so big. Where's your muscles? Can you show me how big your muscles are? Oh, well, yeah, oh you can do two because that's mighty. We're going to do strong and mighty, all right? All right, we're going to all do this. You guys can sit down. Me and Caden are going to stand up and do this together. All right. Thanks, Nat. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing that my God can't do. stars far away my god is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing that my god can't do my god is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing that my god can't do my god is so big Nothing. 
is that? Well done, Caitlin. Everyone give Caitlin a big clap. <laughs> what a great message. And it's so simple like that. God is so big and so mighty and there's nothing he can't do. So thank you, Caden. We've got some the um, kids' packs here if you want to take one. You don't have to. And do you want me to say we have the offering? So your tithes are now going to be taken. Thank you. <laughs> Let us pray. Father God, we acknowledge your presence with us right now. We thank you that during this time we've had an opportunity to give a monetary offering. But Lord, today we want it to be more than that. That here right now we give of ourselves to you. And not only do we pray, Lord, that you would use the monetary offering to further your kingdom here in this community, but, Lord, that you would use us as well. That you would give us opportunities to share of your love and your forgiveness. And so we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to bring before you ourselves and our monetary offering as we give thanks to you for all that you've done all that you've provided. And Lord, we acknowledge you that there are many things that are still to be done. So again, thank you for this time of an opportunity to give. We pray in your name. Amen and amen.
Good morning. Thank you, Ben, for that lovely message this morning. I'm going to read to you now from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in an uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. May God bless his holy word to us this morning. Now, I hope I don't um, steal... Oh, sorry. I hope I don't steal Lynn's thunder here. But, um, you know, the more you read a psalm, <laughs> the more you get out of it. There's a whole lot of language there that is quite combative, you know. Um, heartbreak, hurt, destruction. And then there's this verse, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. In the chaos, God is calling us to be still, to be calm. Now, from personal experience, that's not that easy, right? I want to fight back. I want to get angry or just emotional. It's hard. But the best thing to do is to be still and know and exalt God. Exalt God. We give him the honour and the glory because as the psalm reminds us, he has all the power. And we're going to sing a couple of songs that are going to remind us that this is the truth that we stand on as people of faith. Let's stand together and sing these words. Blessing and honour, glory and power be unto the ancient of days. Because God was and is and evermore will be. Let's praise. Shall declare your glory, every knee 
shall bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. You will be exalted, O God. Your kingdom shall not pass away because you reign on high. He is exalted. The King is exalted. And our, our role is to praise Him, to give Him first place in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds, in our attitudes, so that others too will see how good he is. Let's exalt him today as we continue in worship with this song. exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted and I will praise His name. He is the Lord forever, His truth shall reign. a little bit of concentration but that can be a good thing because we are intentionally putting the focus on him and singing to him not just about him to him let's give it a go you're getting it in your head Exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise you. You are exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise your name. Because you are a personal God. You come to us when we need you, where we need you. You never leave us. Forgive us for the times when we turn our back on you and try to do things in our own strength. And yet you still remain loving us, waiting patiently for us, ready to guide us and to lead us. 
Father, in our hearts and our lives today, may we accept the challenge that is ours to shift the focus away from us and to put it on you. And as your servant comes to speak to us now, may we be in a place where we can hear that message from her, which I know is a message from your own heart. So be with her as she speaks and be with us as we hear. And then give us the courage to make real in our lives what you call us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Hi, my name's Lynn and I love Jesus and it's nice to be amongst my church family today. I've just seen someone in the crowd, it's okay. As Gay mentioned, um, this is my church family. I, I consider this is the place where God wants me to be. About three months ago, I think, um, my husband was away because he tends to go all over the place, being in emergency services. And um, I thought, where will I go today? I've been looking and searching for a place. And so I ended up here because it's just around the corner from where I live. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I sat and I just had this sense of God saying to me, this is where I want you to be. And so it is a pleasure to be here and it's, you know, an extreme honour to be able to, to bring, with you, bring before you uh, God's word. Oh, someone's needed. Someone's needed. Can you imagine a world where peace and security are normal? That fear doesn't exist and tragedy is unheard of? that locking your doors and using passcodes is not needed. Could you imagine living in a place like this? I could. I have so many passwords, it's not funny. I have to have them all written down. But instead, we find ourselves these days, every morning, waking up to a world filled with risky encounters, to use the term. We can't always keep safe. <clears throat> Especially during these times we find ourselves in. We don't know what's going to happen next. It's like we need to tiptoe. Just hearing some discussions this morning about people wanting to travel and well, what's it going to be like in a couple of weeks' time? You can do it now, but you might not. Or you can't do it now, but you might. It's like this tiptoe, seesaw kind of existence that we find ourselves in. But in Psalm 46, the psalmist gives imagery of our world in great distress. It tells of epic tragedy as the earth gives way and mountains shake and fall. They fall into the sea and oceans rage and roar as destruction flows into them. And I find it interesting that this psalm is a song and yet it speaks of such destruction. It describes a time of crisis for Israel, but it tells of Israel's confidence in God in this time of conflict. They believed that if they obeyed God, he would save their city from human invasion. Now, I don't want to just say stuff and you think that I'm... I don't know where you're at in your relationship with God, but about 21 years ago, God radically transformed my life and I get that this teaches me how he wants to be. This bit... It's not part of my plan. This is part of God's plan. And so when Gay asked me to speak and we were doing a, a series of the Psalms, I thought, this is the one. Because it speaks of, it starts with, God is our refuge. He is our strength. I don't have to do this on my own. I can't. 
God is our refuge and strength. He's the creator of heaven and earth. And I believe that. And I believe his word is here to teach me. God created us so that we would each have a fellowship with him. So no matter what is going on around us, he will be there for us. God will provide refuge, strength and peace. This is the theme that runs through this entire psalm. So when this psalm was written, Israel was facing a crisis. In verse 2 it says, Though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the sea. This is a description of an attack on God's people. Yet despite what was going on around them, they were determined to stand firm. We will not fear. They refused to give way because God was their refuge. So I'm wondering if you watch the news or if you stopped watching it like me. It gets a bit much at times. Maybe you're a paper reader. I know at work we get the local uh, the the paper each day, and that you see a few people poring over what's on the front pages and the pages that follow. It tells of what's happening around our world, the world that we find ourselves in. I tend to watch now and then, but I find the now and then when I watch, it's not great. Just a few weeks ago, we had the tragedy that was unfolding in Afghanistan and that reminder of that threat of terrorism is not too far away. So then I didn't watch the news for a while and I turned it on again and there was that volcano, my goodness. You see that in movies, but this was on the news. This was actually happening in Spain's La Palma Island as the lava was just engulfing everything in its path. But not just overseas. What about the news of our own country? There was an earthquake. I didn't feel anything here. I don't know if any of you did. But where my family live, everything was shaking. Are a couple of hours south of the epicenter, I think you call it. But earthquakes in our own country. And then, of course, there's that word, the pandemic. It's a bit unnerving, isn't it? We hear about case numbers in our own state. Particular sites of where people have been, where they've tested positive. And then I have conversations with friends in Victoria that, that share of the, the fear of those that were protesting. It was quite unnerving. God is our refuge, even in the face of destruction. So that's what this scripture tells us, that God is with us. I believe that. He's here now. He's our ever-present help in times of trouble. We face difficulty and trying times in our own lives. Maybe not as dramatic as these, I don't know. But many of us have struggles in our daily lives, whether it's ill health, family, relationship issues, whatever it is, or you may know someone close to you. Financial concerns, conflict at work, Sometimes our problems seem so big and it's really hard to cope with. Sometimes we even make the mistake of cutting ourselves off from God, from family, friends, even our church family. But God is the one who can do something for us when we find ourselves in a difficult situation. Despite all that's happened, is happening and will happen, we can say with a confidence that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Can you say that? Do you believe that? In verse 4 to 5, it says, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. 
God is in the midst of the city and it shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawn. Many great cities have rivers that flow through them, sustaining the people's lives. Jerusalem had no river, but it had a God like a river who sustains these people. The holy place where God dwells is like a fortress. The strength that he gave the people. Even when things around us seem to be falling apart, God is there holding us. In verse 6, it tells of the nations are in an uproar and kingdoms fall. I don't know about you, but there's a war going on right now. It's been in existence for a very long time. There are many different threats, but the ultimate victory is found in God. How do we know this? The scripture tells us, the scripture tells us that the earth melts at the sound of his voice. God is our stability and our security. We have a peace in him. Verse 8 and 9 says, Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he's brought on the earth. He makes wars cease at the ends of the earth. The psalmist is saying, look at what God has done for you. Now, I don't know about you, and when someone says that, look at what God has done for you in the past. There may be things that that come to mind that God has seen you through that you might not think were that difficult, or they were that difficult, but God saw you and brought you through those. So to me, that says there's no need to fear. We need to trust God for a future, and today we have the promise of the Holy Spirit within us, that peace from God, that peace that surpasses all understanding. This God who will judge the world, but also the God who brings peace. Now we know that to know God is to be in relation with him. And just as God will ultimately bring peace to the earth, He also brings peace to the heart. I remember as a new Christian trying to explain to someone what it felt like when I first experienced the Holy Spirit. And I said to them, if you could imagine, because I'm quite a visual person, just the name of our session too, that I said it's like someone pouring a bucket of warm water, but the water was slow to flow over me. So it was like I could feel slowly this warm water, the presence of the Spirit that just engulfed me and gave me a peace. It's the most, it was the first time it happened, that's how I described it. And it's the most amazing feeling that it, I still remember it that first time. So we know to know God is to be in relationship with him. Just as God will ultimately bring peace to the earth, he also brings peace to our heart through the power of his spirit. Verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. We know that there will be times of trial and difficulties that face each of us, and whether it's overseas or to do with someone we know, something that affects us directly or inevitable, but so is God's final victory of this earth. He will be exalted. Our final verse says, the Lord Almighty is with us. This is God's word. Sometimes I think when I've been in um, core ministry as a core officer, that I wasn't good enough, that I struggled with what I needed to do. I was clearly just trying to do it in my own strength. And God would remind me time and time again that it really is quite simple. But we as humans, we tend to complicate things. And I look at this psalm and it is so simple. God is our refuge and strength. What part of that limb do you not get? It really is that simple. The Lord Almighty is with us, says the final verse. 
This is God's word. We believe that this is God breathed. One day we'll live in a peace where we won't have to lock doors. Peace, hope and joy will be our constant companions. Anxieties, pain and sorrow will no longer exist. That excites me. But until then, life on this earth will remain messy, confusing and scary at times. But only you can decide that no matter what happens, you will stay close to God. Why would you not want to when he says, here I am. I am your refuge, your strength, your fortress. Why would you not? I don't know what each of you are going through or what's going through in your family's lives, people that you know. But if you're struggling right now, if there's something in your life that's bothering you, upsetting you or you're struggling with, if you're finding it hard to deal with something in particular, God is here today. He sits and waits. He waits for us to come to him. God is here today waiting for you. My prayer is that each of you would know God and seek refuge from him. That you would find, as I have, that this is a place of family, of support and encouragement. God is our refuge and strength. Come before God now and seek refuge in him. And he promises he will give you peace. He will give you peace. We're going to sing a song now. And it's be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here with us. You may choose to just listen to the song. You may choose to sing along. You may choose to use this time just to reflect and pray. The places of prayer are open for you. If you want someone to pray with you, just grab the person next to you or someone you know or someone you don't know. God is here waiting for you today. Seek him that he would be your refuge and your strength.
faithful and present God. You're not blind to the storms that rage this world, nor the illness that threatens. Some are visible, but others are hidden in our hearts. Lord, bring your refuge and healing strength. When what's permanent begins to crumble, when we claim your authority, let us remember the joy you have set before us. Lord, help us to let go of fear and doubt and remember your promises, Lord. You are our refuge and strength. Let us put aside what keeps us too busy to be still so that we may lift our eyes to you. Be with us as we enter a new week of opportunities to reflect you and your love and forgiveness in our community. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. What an encouraging word. Do you feel encouraged? I hope so. I do. I know. I know in my head that this is what I'm supposed to do, (laughs) like Lynn said. I know that I need to be still. But this human part of me wants to fight against that and do my own thing. It's it's just like when when we look at those words, power, And in this day and age, we're given this message that actually nobody else controls you. You have your own power. But that's not God's way. And we're going to sing a song that reminds us of that again. We've used this song over the last few weeks because there's a message in it. Because when you think of a kingdom's reign, you think, oh, I'm under the thumb. We think sometimes that's our human brain. But if we look in the spiritual world and actually in the real world, when we sit under someone's reign, there's actually a lot of freedom there. And it's a relationship of trust. So when I say to God, Lord, reign in me, my only aim, my one request is that you would reign in me, is that I am trusting you, God, with everything. As the psalm says, You are my strength and my refuge. I trust you for everything. So as we sing this song, an affirmation of our faith, a request again for God to give us the strength that we need to face the world, let's stand together and sing and claim of the promises of God that are ours today. Over all the earth, you reign on high, every mountain stream, every sunset sky, but my one request, Lord, my only aim, is that you reign.
Lord, you reign in me again. And I pray that you will know his presence this week in your life. And for a benediction, I would like to share these words with you. This, this is the God we adore, the God we have heard about today. Our faithful, unchangeable friend, whose love is as great as his power and knows neither measure nor end. Tis Jesus, the first and the last, whose spirit shall guide us safe home. We'll praise him for all that is past and trust him for all that's to come. Amen. God bless you and have a great week.